item sets are used by the ultimate character controller within the item set manager component. And item sets just basically indicate which item can be equipped in each slot. You can see I've hit play and I have this four different item sets specified here. And these different item sets were created by item set rules. So item set rules are used to specify when item sets are created. Now item set rules can be pretty basic like this one, this my individual item set rule. And this individual item set rule is created by default when you create a new item collection within the item type manager. But you can kind of create a lot more customizable rules and that's going to be the purpose of this video. I, as you can see, I've hit play and there's four different item sets that have been created. There's one with no item types at all. There's one with just the body, one with just the assault rifle, and one with just the sword. It got these three different item sets from the default loadout on the inventory component. And these item sets would have also been created if, for example, you added the item through a pickup. This fourth one is created by the my individual item set rule. And as you can see in the, for the third person perspective, I'm just kind of using my scroll wheel to move between the different item sets and it just moves between them in a linear order. Now we want to do something a little bit more complicated than that and a little bit more advanced in that when I hit T on the keyboard in order to toggle the equip, I want the body item to appear and I don't want the body item to appear to be able to be scrolled to at all. So that's kind of an unequipped state in some sense. And I can accomplish this by using item set rules. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is create a new item set rule. And I can do that under this create menu. And I'm going to create an item type item set rule. What this does is it allows me to specify which item type I want to belong to the item set. So let me go ahead and just add the body item type and I am going to disable can switch to so the character will not be able to switch to this item set and then I'm going to enable default so that when you toggle the equip it will go to the default state which in this case is the body item set. So I just replace that item set rule with the body item type item set rule. Now I'm going to hit play. And you can see now instead of the four different item sets created, I just have this singular body item set created. And the reason for that is because even though in the default loadout, I had specified the assault rifle and sword, it doesn't have any rules for those assault rifle and sword item types. So it doesn't know what to do with it. So it doesn't do anything. And we can just get this body item from the body item type within the default loadout. Now this in itself isn't really too exciting because I don't have any other items that can be equipped. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this body item type item set rule. And I'm going to add the assault rifle now. So I'm going to create the assault rifle item type item set rule. I'm going to make sure I specify the assault rifle. Now this reorderable list right here it's based on the slot index. So you can see that it's called item type slots and I've only been adding a singular element to it. But if for example, the assault rifle was in the character's left hand instead of the right, I would have just had the assault rifle be positioned in slot one instead of slot zero. So that these item type slots correspond to the slot index. Now I do want the assault rifle to be able to be switched to and then it's not the default item set. So I'm going to disable those two parameters. Now when I hit play, you can see that I actually have the body that's still equipped, but I can switch to the assault rifle. Actually, no, I can't right now because I didn't. I need to specify the item type item set rule that I just created. So now when I now I can switch to it and if I toggle the equip again I, I or I switch to the next item again I'm not able to switch at all and that's because the can switch to has been disabled but 
instead of the body being equipped immediately, I don't want it to, so I'm just gonna move it within the default loadout. And now you can see the assault rifle is equipped. If I try to equip the next item with the E key on the keyboard, the character's not doing anything. And that's because of this parameter, the can switch to is disabled. But when I press the T key to play the toggle equip ability, you'll notice that the assault rifle gets unequipped and it goes to the item set that is marked as the default, which is the body. So, so that part is working well. Let's go ahead and create a, another item set rule. Um, let's, let's add the shield. Um, the shield is a good one because it's in a different slot. So you can see here that I'm going to use the shield is in slot one, which corresponds to this value right here. If I go to the shield prefab, and let me click on that prefab, you can see right here that it has a slot ID of one. So, so those values must match, otherwise the rule won't know what to do with it and it won't equip the item. So let me go back to the item set rule. So now I want to, actually I want to not have the assault rifle and I want the shield to be in those, that value. So now I will go ahead and save that and make sure I add that rule to the item set manager. So now if I click go to the shield and I hit play, we should see that the assault rifle is there and actually I need to add the shield to the default loadout. Otherwise a rule will be created or an item set can be created, but the item isn't actually picked up. So it can't do anything with that. So now when I hit play and I equip to the next item, you can see I have my shield now. And if I equip again, it, it just keeps switching between the shield and the assault rifle. If I were to hit T now, it's gonna play the toggle equip ability and it goes back to the body item set rule. So all this, or the body item set. So all this is working really well. Let's go ahead and make things a little bit more complicated and let's create a dual pistol item set rule. And I'm going to do that by creating this dual pistol item type item set rule. And we just want to specify the item type in both slots. And then we will make sure to specify that rule. So we have dual pistol. Now I'm going to add my dual pistols right here and we'll hit have two being equipped so now when i toggle we should do the shield and now we should have dual pistols so yeah that that worked well now if i look at the dual pistols you'll notice that it's not a single prefab that has been set up for the left and right pistol instead we use the item manager to create this pistol weapon right and pistol weapon left and if i actually were to go to those items you'll see right here that we have a slot ID specified for one for the left hand and then a slot ID of zero for the right hand. So, so yeah, two different prefabs were created for those two different pistols. The last thing that I want to look at is the case where you want to have magic that can be played at any time. I don't want to specifically have to use the keyboard to equip a magic item. In this uh, video I'm going to create or I'm going to use the heal magic prefab and just use a new ability to be able to heal at any point and I, I'm choosing heal I could choose any of the other ones but heal provides a good visual effect to be able to see that it's actually working and it kind of makes sense for this use case so the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go to the ultimate character locomotion component and you'll notice that I only have one usability right now and one equip on equip. Well, I'm going to be creating a new slot that I want to be used specifically for the magic category. And I want these two new abilities to specifically use that single slot. So I'm going to go down to the, um, the item category and I'm going to specify the magic category 
and then I will just kind of disable the start type because I don't want the magic to be equipped or unequipped based on a button press. And you notice that we have auto equipped. So if the, the magic item is added for the first time, it will equip it automatically. And then for use, I want to only have this usability play when it, there's a slot ID of two or an item within the slot ID of two. And I want it to play or activate when the action input name is specified, which corresponds to the F key by default. So I've set up the item abilities to work with this new magic category item set rule, but I now need to expand on the character a little bit in that I want to create a new item slot. Right now, we just have the item slot of zero and one, and we want to have a new item slot with a value of two that can be used for these, this magic item types. I'm gonna to go to the character manager, and within the character manager, I'm gonna drag in my existing character, and now I'm gonna to go to the item slots, and I'm gonna specify this new game object that I created that I want to be the, the parent. And I'm gonna specify it within the character item slots, and I'm going to make sure I can actually drag it in, so now, now I'm going to drag it in and you'll notice that I have an error right now because by default it set the ID to the left hand. It already has a left hand, so that's no good. And actually I was specifying it under this Atlas first person arms, but we want to specify it under the Atlas game object or the Atlas model file. So I'm going to go other and now it has this ID value of two. So, so that looks good. I'm gonna hit update character now. And you can see underneath the base slot, a new game object has been created with the character item slot value of two. So that was set up successfully. The next thing that I'm going to do is create a new item set rule. And the item set rule that I want to create is the category item set rule. And the category item set rule will apply the item types to or of any of the specified category. So I'm going to add three different elements to this item category slots. The reason why I'm adding three is because I am adding the, the magic category to the base or to the items with, or the item slot with a value of two. So it's very, very, very similar to like this shield one where I specified the shield should appear in the left hand. Well, now all this, these magic items should appear under this base slot, which has a value of two. So that means I specify it within the third element of the array. So now I've specified the category and that's all that I need to do. And now I just need to add it to the item set manager. So let's go ahead and add the, a new category. We're no longer under the item category. We will add the magic category and we will create a new element for the item set rule. And let me drag in the magic one. And then the last thing that I need to do is add the heal item type to the default loadout so the character can actually equip it. Now when I hit play, actually let's take a look at the item set manager. And you can see that the heal the heel category actually was not created. And then the, the reason for that, I think, is actually because the heel prefab, if I go to this prefab, you'll see that, it, yeah, it has a slot ID of zero when it should actually have a slot ID of two. We were taking the prefab from the demo scene and we are kind of reusing it now for this video purpose. So that's why I needed to change that slot. Now, when I hit play and I go down to the item set for the magic group, you'll notice that heal is added and you can actually see that it is currently equipped in slot two as well. So now when I hit the F key for the action button, we should see that the heal part of Cole effects start playing. So yeah, so now that allows me to play the magic item at any time. 
So hopefully this video was helpful in explaining how the different item set rules work.